Legend tells of a legendary warrior whose kung fu skills were the stuff of legend. If you know anything about me, you know that one of my favorite movies is Kung Fu Panda. When I first saw it years and years ago, I thought that it was just a run-of-the-mill, goofy animated movie. But as the years have gone on, I've realized it's one of the most profound movies I've ever seen, and it changed the way I look at the world. Let's take a look. This is Profound, the show where we analyze life lessons that the pros found. I'm your host, Jake Cano. Join me while we look at movies, music, TV shows, and books, and find life lessons that change the way we look at the world. Kung Fu Panda. If you haven't seen it, kindly pause this video, get out of that rock you're living under, go watch it and come back to me, because there's about to be some serious spoilers here. So let's start with a brief recap. So the movie starts off by introducing us to Poe, a rather large panda who works at a soup shop with his dad, the Goose. But Poe dreams of being a kung fu master. Well, through a series of ridiculous and really funny hijinks, Poe gets selected as the Dragon Warrior, the person who legend says is supposed to bring peace to the land and everybody in it. He's supposed to be the most ultimate kung fu master of all time. Well, a lot of the Kung Fu Masters, the Furious Five and Master Shifu, believe that it's all just one big mistake. They think it's impossible for a big, fat, stinky panda to be a Kung Fu Master. They make it their personal mission to try to get him to leave. They beat him up, they make fun of him, they flat out tell him to go, but Poe doesn't listen. Because of the kind mentorship from the wise turtle, Master Uguay, Poe decides to stay because he believes that by staying, something will magically change him into the Dragon Warrior. Well, as the movie goes on, the stakes increase. The big bad enemy is coming close to the valley to destroy everybody. The Furious Five leave to fight him. And Master Shifu decides to train Poe. And he finds a way to train him using food, so Poe actually does learn some pretty awesome Kung Fu skills. Go check out the montage. It's really cool. So then, as the movie goes on, Shifu decides it's time to give Poe the legendary Dragon Scroll. It is said that if Poe reads the scroll, he will become the Dragon Warrior, the ultimate Kung Fu Master. So Poe opens up the scroll, and what does he see? Nothing. The scroll is blank. Everybody's devastated. Poe goes home to his dad, dejected, depressed. And his dad leans in close and says, Poe, it's time I tell you something I should have told you a long time ago. The secret ingredient to my secret ingredient soup. And what's the secret ingredient? Nothing. Just like the dragon scroll. Poe has this big realization. Pulls out the dragon scroll again, looks at it. And reflected in the gold foil on the dragon scroll, Poe sees his own face. And then he realizes there is no secret ingredient. So, Poe goes off to fight the enemy in an awesome fight scene. I'll link it in the description. And in the entire fight, he ends up using all of the things that made him unique. He uses his love of food to do unique fighting styles. He ends up using his big fat gut to block the punches. He does everything that a regular Kung Fu master would never do. But it saves the day and it saves the valley. So, What's the lesson? What's the takeaway? Don't miss a pony's on a breakaway. The lesson is there is no secret ingredient. Everyone is special because everyone is unique. Poe thought that the dragon scroll was going to change him magically into something else. He thought that in order to be a kung fu master, he had to look just like the other kung fu masters. But the truth is, it was because of his own unique traits that he was able to save the day. And I really resonate with this message because I've seen it in my own life. Years ago, when I was in fifth grade, we were graduating, kind of a big deal, and we decided to have a class vote for the most likely two. I was voted most likely to succeed and most likely to be a stand-up comedian. I was elated. But my teacher told me, Jake, you got to choose one or the other. You can't be both. And that sentence, ooh, that one sentence, you can't be both, changed my life. From that moment on, I started to look at my life as, do I want to be successful? 
do I want to be a stand-up comedian or an actor? I was so torn. All throughout middle school and high school, I was always balancing, should I be an actor? Should I go into business and be successful? In college, I went into engineering because I thought it was going to make me rich and successful. But all the while, I was still doing stand-up comedy. I was taking acting classes because I still kind of dreamed of doing the funny, goofy stuff. But finally, when I graduated college, I was off to graduate school. And I decided it was time to choose one or the other. I tossed comedy and acting to the side and decided I was going to be successful. And in my mind, success meant being a boss. I had to be serious. I had to be organized. And I had to be authoritative. So I went into a new work group and I practiced these things. Serious, organized, authoritative. And the more I practiced those things, the worse I was at them. I was looking around me and everyone in the office was a much better manager than I was. I felt terrible. I was just like Poe. Poe thought in order to be a kung fu master, he needed fangs, claws, or mantis spike thingies. I thought that I needed discipline, organization, and seriousness. But none of those things helped me be successful or happy. One summer, we ended up teaching a class of high school students. And as I got up in front of the class, a natural side of me just came out. I started doing voice impressions, something I've always loved to do, like, uh, is mayonnaise an instrument? Whatever happened to the separation of the classes? You will join me on the dark side of the force. Yeah! I started cracking jokes, and the kids loved it. My coworkers came up to me and they said, Jake, we've never seen the side of you. We didn't know that you were funny, and we thought you were serious and kind of dull. And I told them about how I always loved to act and do comedy my whole life. They convinced me to do something crazy. There was this competition to be a keynote speaker at a professional organization that we were going to later that fall. And I submitted a video just kind of as a joke, but I got selected. I went up on stage, I did a keynote, I cracked jokes, I did voices. It was one of the highlights of my professional career. Because in that moment, I realized I can be successful while still being kind of a goofball. I could be both. From that day forward, I started to focus a lot more on intertwining the two and being funny, doing impressions, cracking jokes. I ended up doing more speaking gigs. I started to teach more often, really connecting with the kids. And best of all, I met the girl of my dreams, my wife now, because I was doing these funny things. And she always said that's what attracted her most to me. I used to think that being goofy was my big weakness. I thought that it would keep me from reaching my destiny. Little did I know that being goofy is who I am. Look at me. Look at the way I'm shaped. I just naturally gravitate to these kind of things. And the more I embraced that side of me, the more success I found. Poe believed that being a panda was his weakness. But the more he embraced his body type, his unique way of looking at the world, and his love of food, the more he reached his destiny. You are great. You are unique. You are the dragon warrior. You might think that there are things about you that you don't like that are going to keep you from reaching your destiny. But the truth is, those things might be the very thing you need to be successful. The things that make you unique are things like your experiences, the way you think, your strengths, even your limitations. How do you find this sense of confidence? Well, it takes a while, but it's easier than you think. You don't need to join a dojo or learn kung fu skills. All you need to do is practice accepting and loving yourself every day. This could be as easy as talking to your family more, learning about your heritage, learning about your background, keeping a journal, writing a list of your strengths and weaknesses, asking people about them, seeing what they think, going out and just serving others. It's amazing because as you serve others, you will start to see how valuable you really are. And over time, you will begin to see that you are the Dragon Warrior. Until next time, we'll see ya. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment below. Let me know if you have any other recommendations for movies, books, TV shows, or any type of media that you want me to do a Life Lessons video on. We'll see you next time.